Hi everyone. Um, today, well, previously on the video, we took a look at using anchor links or anchor tags to um, switch between different content in the forum. Uh, this time, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a profile page, an about page, a contact page, uh, and we're going to create profile pages for each of the threads and posts so it's going to be we're going to have four in total but I think we're just going to copy and paste so it, it should be pretty simple okay so first thing we need to do is let's just go ahead and copy the index file one two three seven times one two three four five six seven eight that was six we'll just stop it there for now and let's do the about page first so the about page can be really simple. All we really need to do is uh, let's go ahead and put a title using H2 header tags or heading tags, sorry. And we'll, there's a good chance to introduce you to a really good content generating site if you don't know about it. It's called Lipsum. Lipsum.com and it's just a text generator it's Latin from some book I can't remember what it's from and you just come in here generate how many paragraphs you want uh, let's get a little bit more than that now that we have that we can just copy and paste whoa okay wrap the text I didn't know it would do that that's cool Need to learn the tools I'm using. And let's go ahead and separate each of these paragraphs by paragraph tags. If we don't do this, what will happen is uh, the browser will, will completely ignore the white space. But before that, let's create links just real quick to the about page. So we'll go ahead and create a nav element, which is, stands for navigation. And we'll put an anchor tag with a ref attribute going to the about page. And let's go ahead and put a home as well. So it'll go back to the index page. Or no, let's call it forums. Okay. Come back here, refresh, come here. Okay, and we have the about page. So yeah, you can see that even though we have um, spaces here, the browser doesn't honor them. Now, it could. There is a way to get around this. There's a tag called pre. And this has to do, well, it says it right here. Represents a block of pre-formatted text. So if we use this, it should keep whatever formatting we have. And look at that. It keeps the formatting. So that's another way to do it. If you don't want to use um, paragraph tags to do it. But let's just go ahead and use paragraph tags. Come back here. And we get that. Okay. And let's go ahead and add this navigation bar to the about page. And let's go ahead and add this to the uh, thread pages as well. Okay. See if it's working. Yep. Okay, cool. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's make the contact page real quick. So we'll select another index file randomly. Let's make a form. A form is used to submit information to the server. Now, unless you actually have, um, there's several ways you can do this. One of the ways is you can have a server side file that this gets redirected to, or rather, a server location. So we, the file might be called um, submit form, could be PHP. 
Um, it could just be a route. Like that in the URL. But we don't have anything like that, so we're just going to go ahead and use this. The first thing we want to do is use what's called the div tag. The div tag, according to the IntelliSense, it has no, it really, it is true. It has no special meaning at all. It's just meant to be a divider. It just divides content into like blocks or something. And it's one of the base elements you're going to use a whole lot. Uh, the honestly, the uh, the main, the header, the footer, they're the exact same as the div tag, really, except um, they're it's supposed to give them semantic meaning in the document which is the main reason it was made. So first we want to um, use what's use the label tag. And this, ignore that for attribute for now, I'll go back to it later. In fact, let me get rid of that. This is a, um, this is how you name your input fields on a form, your text fields or whatever. So we'll have a input field that's called name and then we'll use the input tag now in the first video I did about this I think I mentioned the difference between open and closing tags and self closing tags an input tag is a self closing tag and what that means is it doesn't actually have um, slash input instead you would do this but because we're using HTML5 we don't have to have that slash so Let's just go ahead and see what this looks like for now. And actually, we need to add a link to the contact form. What page am I on? Okay, so index. Okay. So this is what it looks like. We have the name field, and we have uh, the actual field itself we can put input information into. Now... I would like for the field to be bold, so let's go ahead and wrap these in uh, strong tags just so we can... Okay, so it stands out now. There's actually another thing we can do, which is called a field, a field set. And this is basically used to separate areas within a form. And you, there's another tag called a legend. That allows you to name the field set. We'll call this the email section or send email. Reload. Okay, and we see it got wrapped by a border with the send email at the top. So now we have a name field. Let's go ahead and use the for attribute now. This says, what is this label for? Um, we'll say it's for this input field. We know it's for that. But how do we tell the browser that that label is for the input field? We use a special attribute called an ID. And we'll just give it an ID of name. And this uniquely identifies the input field with a name. Um, there can only be one field with this ID. The ID must be unique within the page. Now, you can have multiple pages that ha use the same ID, but within one page, there should only be one element with the ID name. And then we'll say this labels for name. And what this allows us to do is, uh, if we click name now, you can see it automatically focused on the field, on the input text box. Um, they do this with checkboxes. So if let's say, let's go ahead and add a checkbox. So I can demonstrate, or actually, yeah, checkbox will be fine. So let's see, and we'll put the label after that. And we'll call this um, the is a, oh, subscribe. And then we have to change the four, okay. Get rid of that. Okay, so if we click the subscribe to email, 
it checks this even though it's not um, we're not clicking the checkbox itself and just to demonstrate let's get rid of that ID try click it doesn't do anything let's go ahead and put another field we'll call it email it'll be another text field and actually there's multiple types of inputs you can have you might have noticed we had an input type called checkbox and an input type called text um, you can go to a website called W3 Schools and it generally has pretty good information on this so I would just um, search for uh, W3 Schools input types you can come here it'll give you all the different types there should be a list there's supposed to be a list but anyways you can see there's text, password, submit uh, reset radio checkbox and there's one called email right here these were introduced in HTML5 all of these we're gonna go ahead and use the email one just because next we want a section that has a body so actually we won't use a input box at all uh, we will use what's called a text area and we'll give this a name of or message we'll give it an ID of message it's generally good practice to um, give IDs to form fields just to help uniquely identify them columns and rows this just tells you how wide and how tall you want it to be we can get rid of rows but uh, columns I think we'll keep that around seven well let me show you what it looks like by default okay <laughs> that's what that's what it looks like by default I'm going to introduce you to a new tag called break it introduces a breakpoint on the page so you see how the message and the text area are next to each other when we introduce introduce this it becomes like that so let's see yeah let's put the coals back give it seven columns height it looks like this no oh man I got it backward the columns determine the width the rows the height okay rows make that seven the columns will make 30 my bad okay so now it looks like that we have the send email section now let's uh, let's put a button in there you could send email by just pressing enter well it's not going to submit because we don't have a uh, button I believe two ways you can do two things you can do for the button the first way is to use input type submit and give it a value of submit and the value is just the text we could call this um, let me show the button real quick that's what the button looks like we could call it, call it looper changes to looper and the other way we can do this is to use button now if you put a button just as it is it's going to default to um, type submit especially in a form so typically when you want to use a button but you don't want it to submit anything and it's in a form then you either put it as type button and I think that's it unless you're gonna go ahead and handle the form submission using JavaScript but we're not at that point yet so let's just go ahead and uh, let's just use button it allows you to add icons to it and stuff it's really convenient and you can see up at the top that uh, well you can't actually but it is submitting it's just happening really quickly and when you don't specify an action in the form using the action attribute what it does is it resubmits to the exact same page okay but we have that now let's create another section where we're going to put a 
an image of a map, it's going to be fake. So let's see. We'll use an uh, HTML tag called the address tag. And I believe this automatically italicizes it. Yeah. Next, let's look for a an image of a map. Okay, now that we have an image, um, what I've done is go ahead and save the image uh, into a folder called images. And it's kind of convention. You can call it images or you can just call it IMG image. It doesn't really matter. I like, I like to spell things out. We're going to use a new tag called image. Um, image is kind of like the anchor tag in that it links to a separate document, except... Um, Instead of allowing you to click on it so you can go to that document, it actually loads the content of whatever you link to. So we're going to link to the image that we just downloaded. And the alt attribute says, um, in the event that the image doesn't load, what alternative text do you want to display? We'll go ahead and give it a title too. The title is what pops up if you hover over the image long enough. Just call it the map. And let's see what this looks like. Okay, looks like that. Good enough. TKTS. I don't know what that is. And we don't have a navigation bar. Let me fix the about real quick. So now we... Okay, now we have a working forum, or rather, sorry, we have a working navigation. Okay, next what we want to do is make a profile page, but we only want to link to the profiles here because we're going to put the username underneath the thread title and then link to the profile page uh, right under the threads and the posts. So let's see. How many index files do we have? One, two, three, four. Okay, that's enough. We'll go um, Albert profile. Let me delete these because I'm just going to copy and paste the profile page once we get it. And put the navigation. Okay. So this should be relatively simple. The username for this is Albert. We want to add a profile picture. Let's go look for some random profile picture. Okay, now that we have these, let's see, I'm gonna give Albert a, I'm gonna give him the fish one. So again, we'll use the image tag link to <laughs> the trigger fish and I don't care about the alternative right now just ignore that you don't have to have it it's just like good practice I guess in case the image doesn't load and we'll give him a brief uh, let's go back to that lipsum site By the way, so in Visual Studio Code, you can automatically format the page. It will do its best to format it properly according to whatever styles and rules that you have. Uh, and you can format it using Shift, Alt, F. Got to hold down all three at once. It's really useful until it's not. Okay, so we got that set up. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, but I can't, I haven't linked to it yet. We'll make Albert the thread starter of all of these. So we want to put his name under there. We'll put it under, hmm, I'll just make it a plain old anchor tag. Albert. See what it looks like. And it goes to Albert's page. Oh, DK, that image is too big. Let's go ahead and shrink that. There's two more properties on the image. Uh, there's actually a few more, but what we want is the height. 
actually in this case we want the width I take that back you can alter the width and height of an image using these attributes um, I recommend you're supposed to use CSS to do it that's what's encouraged but we don't we're not using that so we'll make this a height of 100 and this is actually 100 pixels it's the default standard it's sorry it's the default unit of measurement the pixel is and so we're saying we want the image to be 100 pixels tall let's see what that does okay and Albert's a fish fantastic let's go back to the threads now let's link to all these we can just copy and paste this file now Okay, see what it looks like. Albert and Junior Benita Trace Master. And Junior is a turtle. Bernita's a cat. Trace Master is a dog. See what thread two is like. Same thing. All checked out. All look good. So now we have an about page, a contact page, and various profile pages. Well, this is all well and good, but it doesn't look stylish. It doesn't look good. And actually, you know what? I take that back. I was going to say that I wouldn't want to use a site like this, but so long as there's not a whole bunch of advertisements flooding the page, I might very well use a, a website like this. I don't know. But we're going to go ahead and try and style this up and make it look nice. Um, but that will be in the next video when we begin talking about CSS. This was just kind of to reinforce HTML, how this is very useful just by itself. It's how you structure a web page. Um, and it's how it's been done for the past almost, well, actually, it's been over 20 years now. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found it useful. Uh, please subscribe if you find my videos interesting. I'm going to keep going on with the My Forum product. But I think what I'm going to do with this channel is... Rather than give you tutorials on coding and languages, I'm going to just give tutorials and go through how to actually make products. I think that'll be maybe more useful to people. So stick around, critique, comment, and thanks for watching.